So a capacitor consists of two equal and oppositely charged conductors separated by a distance. So this figure shows a very basic capacitor, a parallel plate capacitor. One of the plates has a charge plus Q, the other plate has a charge minus Q, and they're separated by a distance D. The capacitance is defined as the ratio of the amount of charge on one of the conductors to the magnitude of the potential difference between them. So as an equation, we can write C is equal to Q over the absolute value of delta V. So in this equation, C is the capacitance, Q is the charge, and delta V is the potential difference between the two charges. So the name capacitance is related to the capacitor's capacity to store charge. Capacitors with a high capacitance can store more charge for a given value of the potential difference. So the units for capacitance are farads, which have the symbol capital F. The unit's named after the English physicist Michael Faraday, who you've probably heard of. Faraday was a very influential physicist. He's credited with discovering electromagnetic induction back in 1831. So we'll be learning more about his discoveries later in this lecture course. Now, typical values for capacitance range from one picofarad, which is 10 to the minus 12 farads, up to a large capacitance, which is one millifarad, 10 to the minus three farads. The value of the capacitance actually depends upon the size, shape, and separation of the conductors. Let's consider our parallel plate capacitor. If the area of the plates is capital A, then we can write that the charge density on each of the plates is given by sigma, which is equal to Q on A for the positive plate and minus Q on A for the negative plate. So previously, we've used Gauss's law to show that around one plate, the electric field is given by the equation E is equal to sigma divided by 2 epsilon naught, and this is away from a positive plate and towards a negative plate. So we're going to consider a point in between our two charged plates. Now, in between, the electric field from the positive plate is to the right, and the electric field from the negative plate is also to the right. So in between, these electric fields are going to add together. So we can work out what the electric field is there using the law of superposition, which tells us that we just need to sum them. So the electric field there, E, is equal to sigma on 2 epsilon naught plus sigma on 2 epsilon naught, which is just equal to sigma on epsilon naught, which is to the right. So now that we found the electric field, we can work out what the potential difference is between our two plates. So to do this, we're going to need to use our equation that the potential difference delta V is equal to minus the integral of E dot dS. Now because the separation between the two plates is D, Let's call the positive plate as at x equals 0, and that means that the negative plate is at x equals d. So this will let us put limits onto our integral. So we can say, well, the potential difference delta v is equal to minus the integral from 0 to d of sigma on epsilon naught ds which is equal to minus sigma on epsilon naught. And then when we integrate this, we just end up with S and we need to evaluate that at zero and D, which is just equal to minus sigma on epsilon naught times D. And sigma, we've already said, is equal to Q on A. So this is just equal to minus QD over A epsilon naught. So what we were trying to get was the capacitance. So finally, we can use our capacitance equation that the capacitance is equal to Q divided by the absolute value of delta V to come up with the capacitance. So the capacitance in this case is equal to Q divided by QD over A epsilon naught, which you can see the Qs then cancel out, and we're left with this being equal to A epsilon naught on D. So this is actually the equation that gives the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. 
So here I have a parallel plate capacitor. You can see it consists of two circular parallel plates. Now, at the moment, the plates are about six centimetres apart from each other. And our capacitance meter is giving a capacitance of 53.7 picofarads. Now, what I want you to do is predict what reading is the capacitance meter going to read when I change the distance between the plates to 12 centimetres. Okay, so let's check your prediction now. I predicted that if we double the distance, then the capacitance should halve, and so we should end up with around 27 picofarads. So let's try that. This is now at a separation of approximately 12 centimetres, and the capacitance reading meter is reading 35 picofarads. So it has decreased as we expected, though not as the exact factor. So there's a few reasons for this. Capacitors can be a bit tricky because many things in a circuit and around the capacitors can actually act as capacitors. So for example, these cords, which are connecting the capacitance meter to the capacitor plates, have the ability to store charge and so also act as small capacitors, changing the capacitance of the system. So when we came up for our expression of the capacitance of the parallel plate capacitors, there were several steps that we followed. We follow these same steps if we want to work out the capacitance of other charge distributions as well. So the first thing we did was calculate the electric field between our plus Q and minus Q charge. This can be done using methods such as Gauss's law or Coulomb's law. Next, we calculated the potential difference using the equation that delta V is equal to minus the integral of E dot dS. And here we were integrating over the distance between the two charge distributions. Then finally, we used our equation for capacitance C is equal to Q over the absolute value of delta V to calculate the capacitance of this distribution.